Hey y'all, welcome into Lemons to Lemonade. My name is Kara and we're a furniture flipping family located deep in the heart of Texas. We started flipping furniture last year when my husband lost his job due to COVID and we've been flipping furniture ever since. It's pretty fair to say that we're hooked. This week we are flipping the cutest free dresser that was given to me by a girlfriend. When she sent me the picture of this and asked me if I wanted it, I couldn't get in my car fast enough. I mean, it's got feet. I love dressers that have feet. So join us for this DIY glam dresser makeover and we'll show you how to refinish a dresser that's a little drab and a little dated and DIY a makeover on it that anybody would love to have in their own home. So come along with us to the garage and we'll show you what we did. Okay, so here's our start. Very, very cute dresser, just needs a little help. Like I said, there's the adorable feet that I just love. Uh, needed just a little TLC. Everything was in really good shape. The drawers were nice and clean and worked well. It had beautiful dovetail drawers. And then there was just some damage to the top that needed to be taken care of, but all in all, pretty easy flip. This had been previously painted, obviously, so I knew that I had to get the paint off. I had a specific idea for these feet, which I'll show you guys in a little bit. And then I tried to sand the top, as you could see, but it took a little bit of time, more time than I wanted to put into it as far as sanding goes. So I went ahead and got out the citrus strip stripper so that I could just strip the top and then sand the rest. The trick to using citrus strip is to make sure you have a lot of it on top of your project and then you do not want this to dry. It is a beast if you let it dry. So you need to keep it damp and the best way to do that is to put saran on there. And once you've got the saran on there, it can sit for as long as you want until you can get back to it. Once you're done stripping off as much as you can get off, you want to take mineral spirits to deactivate the stripper, put on a really good amount, and then take some steel wool and just rub it in so it stops the stripper from working and it also will take off the rest of the sticky paint that's left on the top. Now that my mineral spirits is completely dry, I'm gonna take my rotary sander with a 180 grit sandpaper and get off the rest of the finish and the paint and whatever is left over on the top. And I'll follow this up with a 220 grit to make sure the surface is nice and smooth.
Now I've got a medium grit sanding squish pad on my surf prep and I'm going to go ahead and sand, lightly sand down all these details on the drawers so that my paint will stick to the project. Here's where we start to get interesting. Originally I had picked up Gracious Rose in the Krylon chalk paint by Sherwin-Williams for this project. It's about to go south from here. Oh, got to prep all these drawers before we get ready to paint this uh, paper around the drawers. Make sure that there's no overspray so that you don't get spray into your drawers and it looks really nice and crisp on the sides. Now I'm going to shake up the paint really well and load it into my gravity fed HVLP sprayer. I have a filter in the top. I like to filter all my darker shades of chalk paint. It helps make sure there's no chunks that go into my spray gun. I'm going to go ahead and cover my photography backdrop with some plastic sheeting. This backdrop is actually just some old planks that we had from a raised garden bed that we didn't end up using. So we converted it into a staging wall, which works pretty well. So when I started painting this pink, I knew right away this was not the color that I wanted to use. It was very Pepto-Bismol. It was just not the vision that I had in my head. So we love our local Sherwin-Williams store. It's right around the corner from us. So I went down there and I talked to the manager and I told her what I was looking for and we looked at some color swatches and she fixed the color right then and there for us and mixed it into something else which ended up turning out absolutely beautiful. It was exactly what I wanted. And so Sherwin-Williams saved the day on this dresser flip, that's for sure. I ended up going with this mulberry colored chalk paint. Uh, it was more towards what I was looking for, which was like a dusty rose. Unfortunately, I did paint the entire dresser and all the drawers before I totally committed to the fact that I hated the Pepto-Bismol pink. So we have to respray the entire thing. I'm going to do a paint wash on the top of this and the feet. So this is just water that I'm using right now with my zebra fan brush. The water helps make sure that the top of the dresser is going to soak up the paint wash that I'm doing evenly instead of leaving it dry and then it does it unevenly. I'm gonna use some Bonafide Beige chalk paint that I already have. I have a half a cup of water to a half a cup of paint that I'm gonna put in there, mix it all together and make the paint wash for the top. To apply a paint wash, you want long, even strokes all the way across the top of your piece. And then you're just gonna make sure you go from end to end, and then when it is done, let it sit for just a few seconds and go back with a dry cloth and wipe off the extra. And just keep on doing this for the entire top of your piece.
I really wanted a driftwood feel to the top of this, which is why I chose more of a beige color than a white. And you can see it's already naturally blocking out any of the yellow in the wood and getting it a nice driftwood feel. Now that I'm done with the top, I'm gonna to do the exact same thing to the feet. Apply a nice layer of the paint wash all around these feet and wipe it back after a minute or so. And then I did end up letting them dry all the way and then applying a second coat to get the look that I wanted. Now that that's nice and dry, it's time to put those fancy feet back on. I've been using Minwax Helmsman Spar Urethane for my top coats lately. I absolutely love it. It goes on so nice and it does not yellow. So I know it's gonna do a great job on the top and this lighter color dresser. I like to put three coats of polyurethane on the top of my pieces and usually at least two or three coats on the dresser body itself. Once my coats are dry, I go in between each coat that I apply and just use a light sandpapering to make sure that it's nice and smooth on the top. Time to put on the hardware. I decided to go with some gold bar poles and some gold T poles on the sides. Okay, so at the end of the day, everybody always wants to talk about the numbers. I cannot tell you how many times we have had neighbors stop over and ask us if we can actually make a living by flipping furniture full time. And the answer to this question is yes, you can. And it depends on how busy you wanna be. But these days I flip about one or two pieces a week on average. So it is indeed my full time job at this point. 50% of my work is custom orders, so I'll flip one custom order every 10 days or so on average, and then one piece that is all my own that I flip to sell for the weekend. When my husband got laid off from his job due to COVID, we easily flipped four to five pieces a week on average. That's because both of us were out there working in the garage full time at that time. So yes, you can indeed do this as a business. You will stay very busy and you will have to work a lot to get it done if this is gonna be your full time gig in my opinion. Um, if you have any other questions about this and how it works, please feel free to leave me a comment. I am more than happy to assist you or answer any questions that you have about this furniture flipping business. So let's talk numbers on this particular dresser. So like I said, I picked this up for free. It was given to me from a girlfriend, which is awesome. I did buy the paint, the ugly Pepto-Bismol paint uh, I did purchase, so I had that. 
Uh, the stain that I did on the top, I already had, so there's no cost in that, but I did buy new hardware for the piece. So all in all, I'm at looking about $45 total investment on this one. I listed the piece on Facebook Marketplace for $400 and it sold in three days for the asking price. So that puts me in at a profit of $355 total on my free fabulous glam dresser. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and join me next week. I have a really cool buffet flip coming for you. So I'm excited how to show you guys how to do that. And I've also got an update on that MCM bar cart that we flipped a few weeks ago as well. So without further ado, let me show you how this dresser ended up and this beautiful dresser DIY makeover turned out. See you next time. Thank you.